Hello, good evening, and welcome to the Full Force News Burst Live special with me, Christopher McLeod, aka Diagnostic 80, brought to you by Generals Joe's Reborn.com. And I'm talking pre orders. Yes, we had uh, a bunch of pre orders pop up today, which we all knew was coming. Um, but I thought it'd be nice just to have a, you know, just have a chat about it, just have a little, a little chin wag. Uh, you know, might as well. What, why not? Nothing else to do. Just kidding. Um, yeah, but lo lots to talk about, actually. Uh, some quite interesting developments that I didn't actually expect. Uh, pre pleasantly surprised, I will say. Um, and uh, a cheeky other little pre-order that's popped up or, or kind of returned um, from the depths of everyone thought it was sold out for Evzies. Uh, no, oh, I'm trying to sort my hat out there. But no, um, yeah, lots of you are going to be telling me so in the comments today. But I'm happy about this. Why would why I I'm happy to be wrong on this particular one, um, but let's get stuck in anyway to the pre-orders from earlier today. Yeah, let's do this. Ow. Yeah. Okay. So we had uh, quite a, a few things go up for pre-order today. We had the retro figures of Beachhead Eels and the Snow Serpent. We had, of course, the ferret pop up and. The frippin', the frippin', the frippin', whatever that means, the flipping vamp came back. Uh, Backstreet's back, right? All right. Um, and absolutely shocked everybody by going, hey, here's a few more of us that you can have. Go nuts. And everyone did. Um, it, actually, I was surprised it lasted as long as it did. A lot of people were like, mm, it's sold out again. I'm like, well, yeah. Because <laughs> what you expect, we like it's a very popular vehicle, and lots of people didn't get in on it originally, and all of a sudden we had another uh, attempt to to do so, and um, I'm not surprised, and like I was very, very surprised that it lasted. I think well, I checked back about ten minutes later, and they were still in stock. It might have been fifteen minutes later, so I was thinking, interesting. Um, and, and I actually did expect it to sell out in and around that time anyway, and it did. It went fairly soon again, but uh, like I said, not to be expected, surely. Um, a side question here from James Bingham, who says, Chris, you've talked to Brian Flynn several times. Are there more Joe Ultimates coming? Yes, I can confirm there are more Joe Ultimates coming. Um, they only cancelled that wave of figures because it didn't reach the like it didn't it they didn't sell well at all like pre-orders wise and they have to reach a minimum pre-order requirement to actually go ahead. It's not like a known what's the word? It's not like a crowdsource necessarily, but if they don't get enough pre-orders, then it just becomes sort of impossible for them to do so yeah it's not that the ultimates line is finished it's just that that particular run th those three figures in that wave have been cancelled because they didn't sell well enough i mean they're just they're literally just shipping what the the last wave has started shipping and they've started post making posts about that there's another wave to come beyond that and then i know for a fact that there are other ultimates on the horizon as well so it ain't the end of it do not worry um, it was just that particular batch of pre-orders, uh, uh, you know, that particular batch of ultimates, which technically wasn't a wave. It was just a little bonus kind of thing, wasn't it? But yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, sad news, basically. Um, Samuel Moore says, saw a YouTube video, guys, discussing Brian being out at Super 7. Is that true? No, it's not. I can actually confirm that that is 100% not true. I saw that I've seen the post kind of making the rounds and I've actually spoken to Brian about it specifically. And he is like, <laughs> what? Uh, like genuinely like this is absolute BS. So, I mean, it's one of those ones where if you want, you can believe that or you can live in reality, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> They're your two options. But um, uh, yeah, as far as everything goes, that, that is, it was all false, basically. Um, but uh, anyway, it, that, hey, that's straight from the horse's mouth. So. What, what do you what there's not really I mean there's not really much else I can say about it other than that is what I've been told but at the same time I'm also being told in a way that's just like they are in bemusement at this like just they're just kind of looking at it like huh so yeah 
Um, I think I don't think there's, if anything, uh, misunderstanding, uh, wires crossed, whatever it may be. Uh, m maybe it's like some information has been misinterpreted. I don't know, but basically, nah, ain't ain't happening. Um, but I, I, what what all I, all I can say, I suppose, in this at this rate, at this point, at this stage, all I can say is that time will tell. But I, from what I've been told directly, in a very kind of like roundabout way, is that it, it is not true at any of it. Um, I don't even think the numbers of investment are, are actually uh, accurate. Well, they're not accurate at all. And um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I, it's up to you guys. And at the end of the day, it's it's no. I mean, it's not. If it's not actually happening, which is what I've been told, if it's not actually real then none of this matters <laughs> at all. And if something like that is actually happening, and I'm just being like smoke screened or whatever you want to call it, um, I would say that, you know, what difference is it going to make to the consumer? Probably I don't know much of anything. Um, I don't know, really. It just doesn't, it's none of it, it, it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel good either. When I, I read that post the first time, I was like, how can you, how can it be not a, a, an ins a personal insult? And do you know, I'm like, like there, there seems to be like a contradictory sort of vibe to that post. Anyway, it's irrelevant. I'm not going to sensationalize it because I it is what it is. And I've been told that it is unequivocally untrue. But like I said, I'm just telling you what I've been told, like I said, from the horse's mouth. And I have to, I have, I feel, I feel more confident on from what's coming from Super 7 than I do from that stuff that's kind of going around. Anyway, there you go. That's all I know about that, uh, which is a lot more than I thought you probably were expecting, but there you go. Um, so Vamp, that popped up today for pre-order and boom, amazing stuff. So um, for, who actually, who was in, who was in um, the position of not, so all Super 7 Joe Ultimates are cancelled. <laughs> I know you're joking, FC Viper, so I'm just going to leave that. Um, <laughs> right, so uh, who didn't get involved in the vamp first time around, but managed to get one this time? Anyone in the comments? Um, let me know. I, I thought it was a very smooth day again today. And the other aspect here I, I I liked was the fact that the ferret's still in stock. That's awesome. And, well, actually, well, let's go through retro first because the vamp popped up for a little bit and we got an a second opportunity. Let me know in the comments if you managed to get in on the second round because, um, yeah, and if you missed out the first time, are you now relieved that you got in on the second time? I have a feeling there might be a third time. <laughs> Just putting it out there. Um, Ed says, who here didn't order a vamp the first time around? Fake fans. <laughs> Guess what? I didn't order it the second time around either. Do you know why? Because I've got one coming from Nick from the United Kingdom. That's why. Um, lols. Uh, but yeah, I am a fake fan. You know that. Everyone knows that, right? Um, I mean, obviously, a fake fan would put this amount of work <laughs> into a brand you can't stand, right? You know what I'm saying? Obviously, I hate this. I'm I'm a massive fake. I've I've only really been into it since like not I wasn't there in eight, I wasn't there in 82. I wasn't there in 64, 66. I wasn't there in 66. I wasn't there. So obviously I'm a fake. I'm the ultimate poser. Yes, I am Ed. I got three the first time, says Cobra Crimson Commander. Vamps, that's a holler back. That's amazing. That's amazing. Ryan Daly, Sloppy Seconds. Is that? Did you get Sloppy Seconds, Ryan, or are you just calling it a funny name? Uh, Andre Jones, yep, picked up my vamp on the second time. Brilliant. Do you know what? That makes me really happy, um, knowing that people missed it the first time and then got in the set. I, it just makes me happy. It makes me feel like great. Like, cause I know that feeling. I know that feeling of that FOMO of missing out initially. Everyone blooming going on about it and loving things and just showing it off. And you just like, ah, sons of bees. But no, that's great. That's great. I'm really happy for you, dude. And um, yeah, let me know in the comments if any of you, any other of you 
guys or gals uh, picked it up the second time around. Uh, this guy's a phony, a big fat phony. That's me, toy boat, toy boat bounty hunter. Uh, FC Vibe says, I passed the first time, second and third on the vamp. I'm just waiting for the stinger. I like it. Uh, hello, Repaint Colonel in the house. Hello, Neil. Um, Paul says, I knew it. Of course, I am a massive fake fan. Uh, GL says, Gridiron Studio has some seriously awesome add-ons for the vamp. They really do, actually. They really do. Um, I had the vamp in my first order, then cancelled a month or so ago. Then today realized I still really wanted one, so ordered today. Nice one, Jeff. Nice one. Um, just opening mine now as you speak. Amazing. I'm not medic underscore 1849 to give you your full title. I'm very jealous. Um, ha hopefully, um, I'll be able to get my one um, from the other side of the universe uh, soon. But I'm just happy that I've secured one, is all I'll say on that one. Uh, just saw my live, says Stanley. I oh, just saw that I was live. I haven't really spoken about much other than um, the vamp popped up today, and we're going to be talking about the other pre-orders. Oh, and, I'm, and there was a, there was a bit of talk about Super Seven. And from what I've heard from Brian and the team, it's the the rumors that are floating around are not true. That's what I've heard. That's what I've been told. Okay. Um, right. I'm gonna come back. Well, thanks. For, keep it kept coming in the chat. Let us let me know. It's I'm, I do like even if I don't read it out. I do like seeing that people you know have been able to get one on the second bite. So that's awesome. Let's move on then, and we'll start with Beachhead because we've got some we've got some more images as well, which is really cool. And I thought I'd put it on white background, make it a bit you know a bit more of, a bit clearer, so we can actually get a good look at these. Um, uh... Shipping snafu on my vamp. I'll be the last on the planet to receive. Oh, blitz! I hope not. I will. I'll be the last one on the planet. I think that's how it's that's how it's rolling at the moment. Um, but yes, Beachhead looks phenomenal, and he actually looks even cooler in these shots. Uh, love it, Cobra Crimson Commander. You just wait. Rewind later and watch that bit about Super Seven because I can't. I'm not going to go over. It. I, I don't want to go over it again because it's about we're talking this now. I'll talk. I will probably mention it on the weekly as well. But there was some there was some rumor going around about Brian being out and all of that kind of stuff. But again, you can check it out. Some um, you know after this finishes, um, yeah. But Beachhead phenomenal. Um, the deco is just yeah, it's popping for me. It's on and popping. Um, I'm I've, I'm over my weirdness about the green rifle. I still don't get it. I still don't get it. But you know the fact that the magazine is grey, but they just went with the green rifle, huh? Um, but uh, I, I I would have said give us a grey gun and a grey crossbow just to completely differentiate from old um, Cobra Island Beachhead, who I still really love. But I just I'm really excited to have another version of Beachhead, and. Uh, Hopefully a Tiger Force version in the future. Hopefully a what else could we get? Like his version, his actual version two. Beachhead would be sick. Yeah, like uh, the more Beachhead's the best. He doesn't have the beret ray. No, he he just has the one tucked in his um whatever that's called. The old yeah. I always forget that word and then remember it solidly for like months, and then I have to use it again and it just goes out of the head um but yeah you're not going to get the actual beret beret you just have the one that's tucked into his um that um now that we have two beachheads i hope for a curveball and get his kid was it his kid was it his grand rat grandkid are you talking about the cops I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about checkpoint right i'm pretty sure it was checkpoint and i want to say that his grandfather in the com in the card, I can't remember. I'm gonna have to look at the card again. But yeah, I know I know exactly what you're getting at. I'm pretty sure it's checkpoint, which is another funny uh, name for a cop, um, the cops figure that then has a um, GI Joe related code word. Was it checkpoint? I can't remember now. That's gonna really bug bug me. But it was it was one. Of, it was like Sneed in the third or something, wasn't it? Yeah, anyway, it's it's irrelevant. I don't know why I'm getting into that. <laughs> anyway, some cracking images of Beachhead. He looks so good. And here's some more. Um, he's thrown one of his grenades there, one of those kind of kind of gas grenades that he's got. Uh yes, it is checkpoint. Thank you, Jeff. Checkpoint it is. 
And um, I don't know. I'm just I'm I, I'm really happy that we're getting this one now as well. I think this is going to be a solid retro figure. This is going to be up there with your gung hos and your um, forgets all of them. Your snake eyes is uh, snake eyes and gung ho. I think are my favourite retro figures so far. Haven't got Duke and Scarlet, but I hear very very good things. Uh, obviously, Recondo's a banger, uh, but I have I have a Recondo, so it's like I know what to expect. Um, it's really just the deco, isn't it? But like with uh, Beachhead, I just feel like it's going to be up there with, for me. Uh, Gung Ho, Snake Eyes, and Lady J's accessories. <laughs> that's that's the that's the excitement I'm feeling for this Beachhead figure. Um, here's a couple more shots of him. There's a back shot as well, so we can check out his his butt. Um, Ray says almost a perfect Beachhead, but for that green gun, I know. But eh, I mean also. Uh, you know, worst case scenario, you just paint it as well, right? And I know you can, Mr. Murphy. Mr. makes amazing customs all the time and posts them and shows off and makes makes them and sends them for free to some people because he's insane like that. Yeah, Ray, I see you. <laughs> but yeah, I, um, yeah. I've got Retro Scarlet and Recondo. Both are excellent. Still waiting on Duke, says Toy Bounty Hunter. Yeah, I'm excited to uh, to actually see those. I've got to say. I've got to say. I am excited for that. We tried it the other way, but it didn't work. Exactly, Stygian. Exactly. Um, retro is an ingenious repaint scam. It is, isn't it? I love it. I'm all about scams. and. <laughs> um... Oh, uh, Cobra Crimson Commander says, I heard a rumor today that the Cobra Trooper is coming to the retro line. Like I said, a rumor, take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, but I think we can. I think we know the Trooper's coming at some point, don't we? Yeah. Wink, wink, and all that good stuff. Um, you can give him Airborne's gun, give Airborne Mutt's gun, just play musical chairs with the weapons like I do, says Ryan. Yeah, yeah, musical weapons. That's terrible game. Retro Duke arrived from Amazon on Tuesday. Scarlet's not shipping until the 17th, question mark. I, I don't know, actually, Ed. Um, I know a lot of people that have everything somehow. I don't know how they do it. I'm a horrible person. No, you're not, Ray. Um, you're an amazing person, and you're an amazing customizer as well. Shout out to Ray Murphy. Go check him out on Instagram. You will not be disappointed unless you hate the classified scale, for example. But no, um, you won't be disappointed. It's amazing. Um, Derek's picked up Recondo today, just waiting on Duke. Nice one. No retro Scarlets around here. I can't see that. I, I don't see them anywhere in stores, Viper Scout, ever. I hope they do make a Cobra Trooper. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's got to happen at some point, right? Anyway, um, is there a distribution issue with people getting all the retros at different times? I ordered Recondo Duke and Scarlet at the same time and only got Recondo. Jeff, there is a distribution issue all the time. I wonder, though, if it's that you're getting some sooner now than you would expect, rather than all coming at the same normal time. I know, like, before it was all late and all over the place, but now it seems to be we get them much quicker after they've been revealed. And it seems to be the best staggered in that sense as well. So I think there's a distribution issue still, obviously, uh, but this time it's they're getting things to you real quick before other things in that wave are getting to you, if that makes sense. So, you know, rather than getting them at the time that really should be expected and getting all of them together, you're getting like a couple like really soon after, and then another one comes when it actually should have come in the first place. You know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, there's, I mean, there's this, I mean, distribution issues. Yeah, of course. This is, you know, the world we live in. It's not even just GI Joe figures or Hasbro. It is literally all sorts of things. Um, some things just get, some things just become really hard to find. Or, get, I mean, medication, for example. You know, like uh, it, all of a sudden, something will be look really hard to get hold of for no reason other than it just got popular or something. I don't know. Um, heroin. <laughs> um, Pulse says Scarlet shipping four ten, but Amazon says four seventeen. Well, that's because they're, yeah, they're gonna have you know they've they've got different times when they're gonna get that product in. Effectively, is what's happening there. Um, or someone hasn't updated it. Has Emily or Lenny explained why wet retro was created? Um, I mean, retro was sort of like 
it was sort of like one of those things that the fans really wanted. They wanted retro card back figures at six inch scale. That was that was something that like I think a lot of people wanted to see based on what Marvel Legends were doing and what Star Wars Black series had done. Although they have they they have done, yeah, they have what I'm talking about, they have done carded figures at six inch. Yeah. They've been they've been more like exclusive though, haven't they? More than anything else. It's not like there's a retro line, but like with Marvel Legends, you get all sorts of crazy cool um options. So I think it's probably more of a thing that they they were doing it in those lines and it made sense maybe to do for Joe. Um I don't think it was like you know a a, a deep thought process involved it was just there yeah, let's do some retro figures they didn't really nail it initially but like they once they got once they kind of got moving with it it then almost came to an end anyway and then it's it turned out that they were going to do it again and i think they've kind of i think like when you look at the retro the new like retro 2.0 should we say and i talked about this a little bit on the last episode but when you look at what they've released recently with let's say duke scarlet Recondo. Um, and then Beachhead, Snow Serpent, Eels, right? Those six in the kind of 2.0 field. And you could probably throw in that HasLab Cobra Commander in there as well in a, uh, in a similar kind of sense. That's a pretty... I mean, they're doing better than they were. There are still, I think, some things to iron out. One, put that ruddy white board around the thing. Why does that keep getting missed? I don't understand I don't understand why that keeps getting missed. It needs to happen, genuinely. Because, and I'm not the only person that thinks this, I'm pretty sure anyway, but um, the um, the white border creates visually st like a strength to the card. It's weird, but that's what it, it creates this like, almost like, this, almost like a border of um, rigidity or like structure, I guess, framing. Like there's there's loads of things you could throw in there from an art perspective, but effectively it frames it. It kind of makes it kind of like it gives it a, a closure. It gives it an end point. When when you don't have that border, everything just kind of like dissipates to the edge, and it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense visually from for me and like for a lot of people because I know that this is something that we've talked about a lot. But like I don't understand why they don't do that. They don't put that that white board around because they're big cards you're not necessarily like even if you had to make the um if you had to make the artwork a little bit smaller it's still massive <laughs> do, you know what, do you know what i mean so it's not like you're missing out on anything or you're cutting anything out you don't see the whole artwork anyway for the most part it's always like obscured in some way shape or form any anywho anywho um that's my uh, that's my only issue with the retro cards at the moment i think like i said i think they've been doing some absolute bangers the only the only downside in the recent um kind of like waves is the the lack of snow serpent accessories that's it really for me again the eel completely i can let that that slide because it's a great opportunity to reissue a figure which is sold out by the way on pulse um a great way to reissue a figure that people missed out on first time around. And yeah, I, and I feel like, yeah, that's like, yeah, that that to me is um, a good reissue, a good op opportunity to do a reissue. They're not going to get many of those, I don't think. I don't think they're going to get many that do what the eel did. I could be wrong, but I don't think you're going to get many classified figures that come out in the regular retail wave that do absolute gangbusters to the point where people are buying like 40 of them and then you know you're you people have missed out like a lot of people have missed out somehow like i don't think that's going to happen very i mean correct me if i'm wrong if you if there are any in, that you can think of any kind of like troop builders or characters even um let me know but i don't think i think the eels are in that kind of weird space where they were one of those troop builders that hadn't been um that very popular for a start hadn't been done at that to that point and we hadn't seen any kind of like really like decent water-based kind of figures until like Torpedo. So like I feel like the eel was in that position of being like highly sought after, very popular um, in that that four-figure wave. And then because, well, not four-figure wave, sorry, what am I talking about? Amazon exclusive that then sold out on Amazon because people could buy tons of them at once, which they did. 
it, you, I don't think there's going to be a situation that really has a similar effect going forward. So if, if we get this reissue of this beauty, great. That makes sense. Doing a Snow Serpent that isn't the deluxe in a different, like, more classic deco, but with retro accessories. Um, that, again, would have been an absolute banger. Great op great idea. That's what you do with it, and that's what it, where it makes sense. Give, but you've got to give them something different, and I don't think the Snow Serpent really has the... You know, do you know what I mean? It doesn't have the different kind of element to it. But the, the snow serpent, like someone just said, the snow serpent was different because you could buy it from multiple places, Ray. No, I'm talking about um, that. I, I'm talking about them as two different situations, like the eel as a reissue, the snow serpent as a like a redeco with you know the opportunity to troop build. There's a, there's a, you're not going to troop build a deluxe figure. Not many people are. Some people will, but you're not going to be able to get like ton, tons and tons of them. It's just like not very good from a financial perspective but like that you know making one that is a troop builder that makes sense so you've you've got a deluxe snow serpent you've got a troop builder snow serpent you've got a, a an eel troop builder which is sold out and no one can get hold of but the loads of people want it still and then you get a retro reissue like they're two different things but they make sense do you know what i mean and obviously doing new figures completely also makes sense beachhead duke Scarlet, Gung Ho, that makes sense. S version one Snake Eyes, that makes 100% sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me to just for the sake of it, do a reissued retro figure with an ever so slight that, you know, just for the sake of it. I feel like there are certain moments that really do make sense. And they have done that more than they haven't, in my opinion, on the retro line so far in this 2.0 version. So I feel like they're 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 still batting high. There's still a high percentage that they're getting right, um, and nothing's ever going to be perfect. And also, I do have to kind of bring my, you know, like because so, I've been getting a little bit like, oh, I should have had retro accessories. But you also have to take into consideration the aspect that budgets are still there. Some things do have to be sacrificed in some element of a wave of something. And it looks like, you know, doing new parts for the Snow Serpent probably was that, that, uh, sat, um, uh, <laughs> sacrifice. It's my sacrifice. Anyway, um, yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's all I wanted to say on that. <laughs> anyway, more images of Beachhead. There he is in his, uh, carded form with his, the hideous file card <laughs> and the cross cell, which again, again, most of the, I would say most of the kind of missteps for me appear on the card. And, you know, the, the la again, I, it, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to keep talking about it because it's obvious. And I've said it loads of times already now, and you're probably always getting bored and you're like, just hurry up. But missing the, the white border um, and the, because um, I don't mind the artwork actually, like the artworks, it's cool. It, it looks pretty dope. It's not your Garrido, it's not your Norum, it's not your heart, it's not that kind of style. It's a different style in a sense. It's like an upgraded, updated sort of thing. I, this is how I'm getting my head into the game here. So that I don't, I, you know, I'm happy to see new art in the line, honestly, even if it's like, um, you know, on a th working on top of a theme, if you know what I'm saying. So I'm cool with that. One, like the other things though, <clears throat> if you go to the back of the card, the cross sell, we've got six figures in this like 2.0 structure. Or we've got, what was it? Eight, nine, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We've got 15 figures, I think. I think I might be wrong on that one. I thought it was eight to start with. Let me let me go through it again. Jay, Baroness, Destro, Gung Ho, um, Zartan, Storm Shadow, Snake Eyes, Crimson Guard. It was just those eight, wasn't it, initially? Cobra Commander has lab. And then yeah, so that's that's nine plus the six. So yeah, 15, I think. I think it's 15. So I haven't missed any out there, have I? Have I missed any out there? Probably have. In any case, <laughs> in any case, um that you know, you put 15 blooming figures on the back of it. If it doesn't fit the um, 
you know, if you can't make it fit 15, 5, 10, 15, just three, three or five, yeah, you can. That's like the easiest one to do. But you could do like five as well on, underneath that that are like little silhouettes or, you know, explosions with, with coming soon written on it. I think it was actually what they did. I don't, I think I did a, um, what's it called? A, um, uh, Mandela effect because I used to I could have sworn and they might have done this at some point for something but I remember in my head I feel like there were cross cells on G.I. Joe cards that had empty boxes that would be like an explosion but with a silhouette in them and I think I've made that up in my head and it's happened later in the brand but not back in the vintage kind of era am I right when I say that because I was trying to look for it once and I couldn't find an example of that, um, of like a silhouette of who it could be, but you didn't know because there was no precedent to, do you know what I mean? So like, I I, I know that there was, yeah, eight, oh, 82 to 83, but wasn't it just coming soon? It wasn't like a silhouette. Like in my head, I feel like there was a silhouette of a figure We didn't have anything. It was just an explosion with coming soon. I'm pretty sure it was actually on there. Um, I could be misremembering though. This is the thing, but I, I genuinely believe, like I've seen it as well. Do you know what I'm saying? Like the silhouette of a figure that you obviously didn't know what it was because you didn't, because at the time that figure didn't exist yet. Twenty-fifth uh, did, but just the silhouette. Thank you, Bob. That's probably what happened in my head. I probably saw them do it in the twenty-fifth, and then applied that to the vintage era. Um, and I know other um, toys and stuff did that. Um, so it might have been me just kind of crossing, you know, cross crossing the cross, crossovering the cross cell. What? Uh, anyway, that's irrelevant again. Why am I, why do you keep going on these random tangents? Rangents, we'll call them. Um, let's move on to the snow serpent himself, who I think looks absolutely phenomenal still. I feel, I think it looks great, but how cool would he look with a, with a retro backpack, a mortar, uh, tennis racket, snowshoes, and an AK. Probably better, yeah, of course, but it's still a pretty cool figure. <clears throat> um, and I don't, I think, like, I'm glad they gave him a backpack. In actual fact, I could have done without the retro backpack. I know, shock horror. That dusty backpack looks pretty cool. Um, the rifle, though, I don't think it really works necessarily. I, I do think an AK works with this guy. Um, just because that's what we've we've grown up knowing. And again, I've said this on other episodes. I'm gonna use I'm gonna use this one right here. It's already ready for him. It's already ready uh for him. This is an AK. This is gonna be used for that snow serpent. I'm gonna put it on my table so it's uh, handy for me the whole time. I've got eels here as up inside. Yeah, I've got eels here as well, and beachhead on my table. Like I'm trying to keep to the theme. I should have put the snow serpent over here too, pretending like I've got them already uh, when I don't. Um, what am I saying? Rifle was a poor choice, says Paul. Nah, it, I think it was, honestly. Oh, that's true. Gridiron is the, I mean, that's the other thing, isn't it? Third party. Um, but yeah, gridiron is, is a great, I mean, that seems to be the answer all the time, doesn't it? Um, Oh God, Stygian! Oh my God, I still haven't seen that yet. I'm, I kind of want to see it, but um, I, I understand the reference. Uh, it's terrible, but yeah. Um, anyway, Snow Serpent. For, for, I, I still think looks great. I'm gonna get this, and I want a couple of these bad boys so that they can uh, back up the old, um, you know, Wolf Head, whatever his name is, um, Wolfy Head. What should we call him? Dances with Wolves. Um, the hunter, the, I don't know what, to, I don't give him a name. We need to give the snow serpent alpha snow serpent alpha. Okay. We'll call it snow serpent alpha. Then I just, I say it like it's crowdsourced. No, I just came up with that snow serpent alpha. And these are going to be his, uh, you know, his little, his, his team his backup, um, code name Costner. I like it. Timber <laughs> Stanley. Oh, that's dark, mate. I love it. I don't mind the snowshoes. I mean, I don't mind the snowshoes as snowshoes at all. I mean, Snowjob is phenomenal. There's the deluxe snow serpent. It works for that for that figure. I just think it's that thing of because it's not the tennis racket retro ones. 
And and how funny would I mean they wouldn't look right actually when I think about it like that. If you gave if you get yeah the blue is good on this pull the the if you gave these guys the tennis racket shoes and then they were like the um the army builders for the deluxe guy at the front it would look a little bit different uh not that it would matter you know it wouldn't really matter it still look cool but there would be a thing of them like having different like you know you don't get the good new snowshoes you get the ones that probably don't work very well and are like tennis rackets good luck guys um Anyway, first chair serpent is exactly Jeffrey. Snow serpent timber leader, so dark. Um, anyway, anywho, there you go, snow serpent. And again, I think again the blue looks great, um, but yeah, just just let down a little bit. I cannot wait to give him this. I think this will make a lot of difference. Genuinely, I think I'm I'm cool with the backpack. I don't even mind the snow. <laughs> Excuse me, the snowshoes. Give them this. They'll look great. Anyway, rank has its privileges, snowshoe privileges. Yes, Blitz, indeed. Uh, anyway, anywho, then you get the card. And again, artwork-wise, I like it. Um, but it's definitely not the same, obviously, uh, as what we all know and love in the... Greedo, Hart, Norum, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, kind of field. Um, Frosty the Snow Serpent. I actually like that one now. I kind of want that one. Anyway, um, Lego. They do look a bit Lego-y, don't they? Actually, McMurphy, Lego shoes. Jeremy, I just got here. You can start over. Okay, let's go from the beginning, guys. From the top. <laughs> from the top, just me yabbering on about pre-orders that have happened already today that you already know about. It's not even really news. It's really just an, uh, an excuse to, to to talk crap for like an hour and a half or whatever, however long it lasts. Um, but yeah, there's your snow serpent. Then we've got the eel, eels. Eels. Um, and yeah, it does look like, from what I can gather, that the red is a little brighter um, on the new one because uh, this one's kind of more of a matte kind of... Uh, it, you can't really see when I... Put it up against that lighting, but you can see it in real lighting, like with real eyes. It is a kind of kind of like darker red. So I think they're going to be a little bit brighter on the old um, on the red, and I think the grey is a little brighter as well, a little a bit little, little lighter, uh, ever so slightly. Obviously, you've got the blue uh, hoop instead of the red one on the old uh, harpoon. Um, but I'm again, and the logo um, is gone, and we've got the sigil on the back, which is cool. Like you know, awesome stuff. A little bit of variation in your in your troops, lovely stuff. Um, yeah, and again, I'm all for this for the reasons I've mentioned before. Not because it's like this, I've already got one. I don't care. That's great. But this is for again. I think really for people that missed out on that first uh, eel sneal. Um, funny enough, it's snow serpents are eels, aren't they? It's quite interesting. Oh, skin tone is lighter as well. Yes, that is very true, Paul. Thank you for throwing that one in there as well. So there's a lot. There's a, there are a lot of subtle differences. Absolutely true. So uh, and and again, I don't think it was necessary. Um, you could have just done the same figure, in my opinion, uh, and just you know been like, "There's your reissue. Go nuts. Army build to your heart's content." Because um, these will be. It's popular still. I mean, they sold out on Pulse again, so they've got... I mean, I knew eels were, like, cool. I knew eels were cool. They are cool. I didn't know they were this popular. And I think eels are cool, all really based on Action Force uh, Weekly Issue 2. The cover of that beauty, with Scarlet and Snake Eyes walking up the kind of tunnel way, hot damn. Like, that is one of the best covers in ever on a cut on a comic, and the eels are cup against the wall. Oh, it's just so good, and um, and that actually made eels in general really cool. They made them like like they made that one eel uh, that they were chasing super dangerous and like really pretty cool. So yeah, I love eels up inside you, but I was n I had no idea. I had no clue. That they were like someone's going to buy forty of them at once, kind of popular. Oh, that's crackers. That's absolutely Christmas crackers. That is. Um,
Anyway, anywho, Hydro Vipers and Undertow need them now. Oh god, Hydro Vipers. Oh my god. If they when as and when they do Hydro Viper, I think I'm just going to quit because I'll get that and that'll be it. I'll just be like, yep, I can. I, I'm going to retire from the game. I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm just going to. I'm going to sit back and relax in my. You know, in my. In my throne of Hydro Vipers. <laughs> Because I'll have to buy forty of the Amazon exclusive. I don't know how what it's going to be. You know what I'm saying? Um, I would absolutely be all over it. Honestly, Hydro Viper, forget it. Forget about it. I feel like they're holding a few back because they are so friggin' amazing. Like Hydro Vipers, Hit and Run, Footloose, throwing Footloose in there. Lightfoot, joking, but not joking. Um, sorry, not sorry. Whatever the hell you say. Um, Lifeline. I feel like they're holding some back. Di uh, well, dial tone's coming. We know that. Mainframe. So uh, there's just a ton. I think that they're holding back because they know they're going to be absolute street bangers. Bit sci-fi. Yes, thank you, Paul. Sci-fi is going to be amazing, isn't he? Bullhorn. Are you kidding me? Past the pierogi. That's ambush. Like blizzard. Fudge. There's so many. Sneak peek. Psych out. Ice cream soldier, obviously, says Viper Scout. Cloud burst, obviously, Jeffrey. Um, there's just tons. There's tons of like genuine bangers that I think we've got to come. And uh, it's just going to be since ridiculous. I can't even say words anymore. Pathfinder. Yes. Cool breeze, obviously. Windmill, obviously, Paul. Yes, of course. I see that some of you are not taking this as serious as I am. <laughs> uh, yeah, eels up inside you. Finding an entrance where they can. Eels. And that's the entrance, usually, around the back. Um, brilliant. And, of course, the card. Um, artwork. Actually, the eels artwork is quite cool and also has a different vibe to it. Almost feels a little bit kind of more cartoony than uh, the other two. I'd also uh, suggest, I will say this though, the original Eels artwork, yes, it's cool, of course, but the backpack is so large. Go check, if you don't, you don't remember or believe me, go and check out the Eels card art. Sod it, I'm doing it on the screen. Um, and just have a look at how massive they made the backpack, because it's hilarious. 3D Joes, <laughs> shout out to Carson. 3D Joes, Eels up inside you. Finding an entrance where they can. I just I would um, just pick this book up and show it on screen, but it's um, too light. Okay, look at the size of that backpack. <laughs> it's literally covering him from neck to flipper as he's got his legs cr crunched up. Look at the size of that backpack. Proportionally, it's it's ridiculous. That is not the size of the backpack. It is much, much smaller than that. Um, and also it looks nothing like that. There's like a thing on the top of it which is missing. So it's missing that kind of like bit on the top, that kind of like fancy bit of design. Uh, hang on. There you go. Yeah, it's like a it's like a T shape at the top. Upside down there. See? It's missing all that de detail and design. It's like a giant box. He's It's like he's wearing a giant Ghostbusters proton pack. Uh, anyway. So I like I do I do like this uh, version. It's completely different, though, I will say, to um, to the original, um, and yeah, kind of like I don't know, interesting. But I'm, I'm I don't know, I'm feeling the art. I just don't think it's it's obviously not the same as the original, and um, that's not a like I said, it's not a bad thing. Uh, water distorts the proportions. Chris says Jeffrey. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, re repeat is another one I would definitely think is definitely. Uh, I think Repeater, 100%, is an, a low-level banger. And I think when he comes out as well, he's going to be massive. Because imagine, like, he's going to be hench, and he's going to have that he's going to have that aliens rifle thing as well, like, the attached to him. It's going to be nuts. Like, Im like I can't wait for that, like, min that kind of uh, Steadicam gun thing. Cannot wait for that. That's going to be sick. That's going to be amazing. And a Night Force version, too. Bring it on. Anyway, then we got the ferret. Now, okay, this is what I've been... There's a lot of points I want to bring up here because they're all amazing. Um, 
one well actually the, let's talk about the first point which is a, it's actually the only down point i will say um and it's not i mean it's not and it is because we shouldn't have expected it i shouldn't have expected it i did expect though when i saw the um some of the project the promo images that the winch would be real but i don't think it is mainly because it says winch detail in the description if you go onto hasbro pulse it mentions the winch but it calls it a winch detail and it doesn't say that it works it doesn't say anything about steering so i don't think the steering column works um it does say that the cannon's movable but that's obvious i guess and the little front gun is but i don't think there's a i don't think there's a feature there um now i will be speaking to emily and lenny and i will be asking them detailed questions about this because this exists and they can't say they they can't shirk my questions on this one so i will be talking about this in detail uh because i think it's freaking amazing um i i don't know i'm it yeah it 100% fits two people 200% fits two people i don't know why people some people were like i don't think it's going to fit to it i mean look at the size of the blooming thing now that's the other thing i want to talk about the size of this vehicle definitely pushed it for me pushed it above what we would expect to pay for a trouble bubble in my opinion i know that wasn't an, a, a, an opinion that was agreed on by a lot of people but as i've noticed on many posts where i in my surprise at the price point lots of people jumped on it and were like being a little bit a little bit if i have to you know they were being a little bit dickish if i have to be honest like it was that thing of like are you honestly asking me why or are you just trying to make a like a point on my comment because i think that is quite good now this yeah pulse exclusive says scott yes it is but we knew that and we also knew it was the Sco scooby vh didn't we i think we did let me just double check that before i make an absolute moron of myself uh that would be funny wouldn't it if the whole time i'd been saying oh it's scooby v yeah it's scooby yeah i was right i was right all along um, so yeah, Scooby VEH. And the reason I know that is because when I saved the image is to put in here, each image was uh Scooby VEH F whatever it may be. F whatever it may be. I'm looking at it. F9239 Pulse Exclusive. Um anyway, 54.99. Wow. And for those that think that is expensive for this, I don't know what to tell you. I do not know what to tell you. The trouble bubbles are $54.99. This is massive, has wheels. Look at the wheels. Has the capacity to carry two figures. And if you're being silly, like seven, because you just balance them on the on the back. No, like two figures comfortably. Um, and it has a lot of cool features. Someone did uh, send me a picture of the missile on the side going, how does this fire? I think it was Darren, actually, Darren, shout out to Darren Marshall, uh, which I thought was quite funny, actually, because, yeah, it's true. It's like, what? At least the original ferret sort of had, he had a similar vibe going on, but the back end was different to the front end. So you could kind of see that, um, yeah, there'd be like a, like an explode, you know, you'd see how it works. This one, it's just the cooperate that things in whatever it is, was it the Muppet Show or Sesame Street or something? I can't remember who the cooperate uh muppets were on what were they muppets i don't even know what the, i don't i don't i can't remember pretty sure they was it was sesame street cooperate but that's how these missiles are, are working just going like two th fighting each other to go which direction yes scott the python patrol trouble bubble was cheaper but that was an accident as we well know which is freaking hilarious still i find that so funny like i just find that really funny that they did that but and it was an accident but this, I mean, fifty four ninety nine. Like I, I was genuinely, like I, I'm, I'm not lying to you. I expected this to be beyond sixty five bucks. I thought this is gonna, this everyone's gonna be really peed off. It's gonna be really expensive. I was like, oh no, this is gonna suck. And then boom, I'm like, oh, thank goodness for that. Um, Talib says, so Lifeline is coming with the Tiger Paw. Uh, that would be amazing. But um, I'm, I definitely think we've got a Tiger Paw on the, on the horizon. And you kind of, I mean, Lifeline's got to be coming at some point. So I, I can't see why not. Um, 
Not a complaint, but I do find it odd with this set that the Scout does not have a pair of goggles. Actually, do you know what, Toy Bounty Hunter? Yeah, I kind of get what you mean there. I kind of wish they sort of had like a um, uh, visor even. Just a visor would have been fine. But yeah, goggles would have made sense, wouldn't it? Can a stretcher fit on the back, says Parser Progi? I don't know. Maybe. Um, but it's cool. Um, I like this thing. It's wicked. But anyway, I think overall, just really impressed with that. And as you can see with the figure as the, she's positioned uh, right up front on the on the ferret, you can easily get a second figure uh, behind her with the feet to fit in the foot, foot, well, footwell as well. Oh, I think I'm going to try SS goggles on her, snow serpent goggles. Good idea. Um, I mean, yeah, there's th that's the beauty part of this line. We've got how many sets of goggles? Big ones as well. Let's see if Dusty's fit. Um, He's got some big ones, hasn't he? But then again, we kind of need them. <laughs> we need all of the dusty goggles just to keep his hat on. <laughs> um, oh, McMurphy says, I'm going to take a Python Patrol officer's grey or, or gretty, grey or black helmet and throw it on the ferret scout to make her look a bit more vintage and less motocross. That's a good idea, actually, McMurphy. I quite like that. I wonder if it, yeah. Um, you could even just get like a, a Valkyrie helmet and repaint it, couldn't you? I bet it would fit because that's a Valkyrie head, I think, isn't it? I, I, I'm assuming. Um, no tow hook for small tow equipment. Uh, I don't know, actually. I haven't even looked at that. Are there no tow hooks? Well, we can't see it. Does it mention it in the... Um... No, I don't think there is a tow hook. Um, but you can probably connect whatever the... Um... You can, I don't know actually what you don't, you don't really need to transport a, a trouble bubble, a trouble bubble, a ferret, do you? I mean, like, it's a shame the winch doesn't work. Um, that I think, but honestly, if the winch worked, I, I'd have just been crying right now. I'm happy that I'm ha like more than happy with this ferret, right? The fact we get this bonus cool new figure as well, sign me up. It's, it's not like. Okay, put it this way. It's not like this particular figure is stopping us from having an, the real driver of the ferret. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's, there's, there's nothing... It's a ferret came as a ferret. It's not like, you know, it necessarily needed um, a figure. But obviously in the Classified series, everything needs a figure. We've worked that out. So this, to me, is just a really cool way of getting a new character, new troop, uh, new female... Um, really cool design, and you get a ferret out of it, and you don't even have to use the um, the uh, scout. You can throw Storm Shadow and Firefly on there, and there you go. Everything's everything's happy again. So this, I'm saying, I just think this is yeah. I think this is this is a win-win, McMurphy. Agreed. If there'd been a working winch and you know all the other work, like you know mechanical elements and all that kind of stuff, yeah, I'd have just I'd have again. I'd have been lying on my throne of ferrets, uh, just quitting life at this point. Just at this, and it's not going to get any better than this. Um, that would be nice, actually, Cobra Crimson Commander. I'm betting we get a 788 fire team version. Well, there is a Python Patrol as precedent. There is a Python Patrol version in the line, in the brand, I should say, uh, in the um, club um, exclusives and what have you. So, yeah, I think. We, I could I could see them doing a Python Patrol one. The Tiger Paw, obviously. I mean, if they don't do that, I think someone needs a uh, check-in. <laughs> you okay, hun? Sort of situ situation. Um, so Tiger Paw, yeah. Python Patrol, yeah. I like the idea of a fire team version, honestly. I think that's a really cool idea. Um, maybe the fire team version can come with a tow hook. Yeah? Done. Sold. Anyway. Beautiful. Beautiful. Every shot of this just looks friggin' amazing. Shout out to Matt as well and the Shoot in the Galaxy for the beautiful photographer, which is not how you say the word. Um, anything there? Does it, no, just little details. So I'm just trying to see if there are any other kind of cool details that I may have missed. Uh, I love the fact you can yoink the massive weapon off the back as well. It's got that little kind of C-clip as well to li uh, clip onto the rail. Love that. Um, they said 788 is a new sub team. Yeah, I totally agree. I'm, dude, I ain't, I'm not 
argue it. I agree with you. I think they will. I think they will. I think we'll get 788 fire team stuff forever going forward. We'll get different um, troops thrown into it. We'll get um, different ve- like towables, vehicles, all that stuff. Yeah, 100%. They want to make little sublines, don't they? I, t- I totally get it. Um, it's almost like, do you know what? I'm kind of like, okay, uh, how can I put this? Controversial, maybe? Um, hot take? I like the crimson stuff, right? I like the crimson vibe. The, crim- the, the crimson vibe isn't out yet. The cr- <laughs> crimson viper is, um, you know, the viper, the um, alley viper, the bat, the crimson guard, the crimson twins, baroness, etc. I love. I do like that. I think that's really cool. However, the seven eighty eight fire team is sexier, in my opinion. It's got a bit of red in it, bit of black, bit of grey, all sorts of stuff. But it, it, it's pretty solid, and I don't mind seeing other things in the same way they do the crimson stuff brought into the 788 fire team and making that like sub collection they call it don't they i mean it's pretty big sub collection <laughs> you know what i mean that fire team three pack the uh the hms with the techno viper like oh so much so much greatness in there um so yeah i can see them doing things like that i can and I wouldn't be against it. Wouldn't not be against it. Fifty four ninety nine for the ferret seems like a steal. Absolutely, Stephen. Like I, I still can't believe it. Genuinely can't. Um, I'm really happy about this. I was so happy. I pre ordered it. <laughs> it's the first first one I've done in ages. But like, yeah, I was I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to get on this. I'm I, I'm still surprised it's still in stock. Uh, it might be out of stock. I don't know. I think it's still in stock. It was when I started this this show. If someone wants to check for me. That's great. I appreciate it. I'm not going to bother right now, but as far as I'm aware, they are. If they do a Nox version, I could see it come with Zanzibar, only because his air skiff is a one-off. I tell you what, Zanzibar on a Dreadnought sort of ground assault deco ferret would be kind of cool. Um, but yeah, or maybe like the ground assault ram, I could see Zanzibar on that. But yeah, I'd lo- I would love to see. Actually, I tell you, I tell you what I think would be cool, Talib. And again, this is just personal preference, and I'm not saying that you're wrong. Obviously, I would love to see Zanzibar with his air skiff. Right, make that a separate thing. Boom, there you go. Thank you, Michelle. It's still in stock. Thank you, and Matt. Thank you, uh, and Blitz. Thank you very much. Ferret is still available on Pulse. Brilliant. Um, I would love to see like Zanzibar with his air skiff done for a ground assault situation. I would 100% love to see Heart Wrencher with the vamp and I'd love with the ground assault, uh, which is the vamp repaint. And then the ground assault ram, I I would love to see someone like Burnout because Burnout doesn't really, I can't see Burnout coming in any other way uh, other than maybe like a Dreadnought sort of vehicle sort of scenario. So I could I'd love to see burnout with the ram because it makes sense to me in my head because burnout is kind of like a mechanic sort of dude and burnout so he's obviously going Rrr. although I think burnout in uh, renegades he had a flamethrower didn't he he might have one in the he might have one in the um, modern four inch line but I can't remember I I just thought his name was burnout because he used to just rip it in there. Uh, <laughs> Not rip it, not the his driver. Uh, they used to like just rip blooming donuts in the uh, car park. Um, what about Heart Wrencher with a dreadnought coloured ferret? Yeah, Jeff. I mean, I'd like to see Heart Wrencher with a with a vamp, but um, with a dreadnought ground assault. But um, honestly, any way we get Heart Wrencher would be cool. I'd like I'd, I'd like to see them do something different with her. Not like obviously stay with the same vibe and the same kind of like look, but. Do something rather than just um, like completely Zorana, like repainted or whatever. I'd like them to do something kind of cool with uh, with um, uh, Heart Wrencher. Uh, Eel is the only one that sold out, Derek. That is correct. Yes. Road Pig on a mini bike. Oh, yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, anyway, let's get through some of these more of these shots. And is there anything like obviously these images are a lot better now, um, but I can't really make out what's in the background there. But you. It's better than it. Yeah, the images I've used now are better than the ones I had before. I'd just taken screenshots from the video before, and these are all the kind of like product images. So this is there was a point to me doing this episode as well, rather than just me talking about pre-orders that have already happened today. 
Um, but um, yeah, I, I can't. Is what is? I, I know that's a bit of his tread, isn't it, on the left hand side? But what's on the other side? Maybe it's just a bit more hiss, like bits and but I don't know. Maybe it's just yeah, but it's so hard to tell. I bet there's something in there that that I'm just not seeing. It's probably the stinger, right? I'm just kidding. I'm not doing that again. Uh, Dreadnought Bat would be amazing, Stygian. I would be all over a Dreadnought Bat, especially one in like um, that kind of ground assault colors, maybe a little like kit bashed and damaged and graffiti on it. And, you know, just stuff like that. Just fun stuff would be on a bat would be great. Um, actually, like a multi pack of Dreadnought Bats and have them all kit bashed with different parts. How good would that be? I think it would be phenomenal, honestly. You could even have one of the figures, just half of it. <laughs> it's like a two and a half pack. <laughs> new new price point. Um, asp. Oh, you think it's an asp in the background? Is that what you're saying? Oh, do you know what? <laughs> Am I going to be seeing things again, like in the Night Force Shockwave uh, card uh, box art? Um, one of the shots has the HMS on the background. Uh, does it? Is it? It's not this one, is it? Is it this one, Paul? Let me know which one it is, because I don't think I've seen it. That is another ferret. There it is. That's the HMS, isn't it, right? On the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, it's like the... Is like that hiss? Is that a hiss tread again? What is that over there? Anyway, I think, yeah, I think that's the one that on the right-hand side you've got the HMS. I didn't notice that before. Great spot. Chris is seeing things again, FC Viper, 100%. Um, this I I I I I know hiss on its side. Thank you, Paul. I th yes, because I remember them talking about that. Oh yeah, you're right. It is a hiss on its side. I I see. Thank you. So this is probably the same, isn't it? This is probably just bits of like hiss on its side and all that kind of stuff. If anything, it'll be the HMS or it'll be the ferret or it'll be so. Yeah, it's not going to be anything hidden. I don't think. But I'm going to do a proper cheeky look at that just to see what what we can pull out of it. Um, I know there's I know there's a lot of kind of like on the fe well I know for the most part I think people really like the ferret scout right but I know I've seen comments about um, not being into it not liking the motocross style in this comments as well like not um, you know liking the motocross style and that kind of stuff um, for me I really love there's something doing there's something happening here I think it's the deco I like the fact that it is not just a gray figure, um, which it could easily have been. It could easily have just been a straight up gray figure, one tone Bosch. But I kind of like the fact that it's got nice little elements to it. Yeah, there's definitely homage to the original Cobra ATV presentation art, Paul, for sure. Uh, that's something that Pat mentions kind of every time we talk about this particular ferret as well. Uh, and he's obviously right too, because that I think that is a de definite um homage for sure um i do love the design elements they put into it though the fangs yeah McMurph, the fangs it's so cool like i just think that's really neat um so i'm yeah i'm i'm a i'm a big fan of what they've done with this particular figure and uh yeah just i'm all in the secondary dope as well like it's it's different and it's kind of like i don't know just into it into it um yeah so this is one i'm very much looking forward to i love this shot um, like waving at each other like they're so far away. <laughs> Probably can't hear each other over the, the loudness of those things. I was on ATVs, when was it? 2020. It was in the teens. Um, and it was my mate's stag do, which is a bachelor party. And we went on um ATVs on a like we did, I think actually we did go-karts first and then followed that up with ATVs as well. And I only ever time at the time I'd been on an ATV was in uh, the Isle of Wight on a school trip when I was about nine or ten or something. How old was I when I went there? I must have been in it wasn't high school, was it? Yeah, it was high school. It must have been high. No, it wasn't. I don't think it was. Oh God, this is gonna kill me. I, I would have been like 10 or 11, I think. And that was, I remember being on ATVs as, as a kid. That, that was one of the things we got to do. And my ATV had the worst steering ever 
like, and yeah, everyone's going to be like, yeah, Chris, it was the O2V's fault. No, genuinely, this quad bike, like, I had to steer it going straight. I had to do that because it was on the, it was on the absolute pi double s, and and ev- and like it was so difficult to try and go around corners. Like, I nearly like bit it a, a few times as a child, and I tell you now, that would have been one hell of an insurance payout if I'd have hurt myself there. Um, there was also another thing we went on, which I'm not sure if you guys have ever had this. There's a <laughs> there was this was the Isle of Wight. It's like a little island off the south coast of England. It's not like it's still England, but you know they it's like a little destination sort of thing. You can get to it in like like I don't know like 20 minutes on. It's not far away. Anyway, um, from the mainland, I mean, it's not far away, but it's a it's a pretty decent sized island. And so we were um, one of the things they had on this on 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 the place. It's not like a, a big theme park. It's just a regular place where people live and all sorts. And but we there was like there were certain things that we did like activities and stuff while we were kids out out there. And th- there was this like it was like a water slide, right? But remove the water, <laughs> and you've got like a like a a shield with wheels on it that you sit on. And you then you, so you sit on this thing, and it, the 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 kind of the pipe that you're on, the half pipe that you're on, or whatever it would be, the the the, the kind of like actual track, is just a concrete like half pipe thing. And so you're sitting in this like in this contraption, which has got it's no connection to anything. It's not like on tracks or anything. It's just freewheeling it on a concrete track going downhill. At an immense amount of pace, right? And I don't think I've ever seen this anywhere other than Alpine Slide. Thank you, Blitz. Um, I've never seen this anywhere other than the Isle of Wight. Um, and we did, I don't think it even exists anymore because it was too dangerous. I think too many people like genuinely, genuinely hurt themselves. I fell off before the end, going around a corner and cut all my arm up here. It was a bad one, but for a kid. But it wasn't that. It wasn't like I was like showing bone or anything like that. But it was a gash, right? I had to have it seen to. I had to have like a, a tension, what have you. Um, anyway, <laughs> that that's what I remember on that trip, and of course on the ATVs, which could. I mean, that has got to be an absolute lawsuit waiting to happen. I don't know how I didn't hurt myself, and we went on one of those giant like ski lifts which doesn't we weren't skiing it was just a ski lift that went over this kind of area so high up and just two kids just sat in there no uh, you, you didn't have any like um adult supervision on the actual seat it's just like you could only fit two people on it so it was just me and another mate sitting there on this blooming <laughs> on this thing just like oh my god how high up are we so many opportunities to die um when i was a kid there on the isle of wight anyway that's completely by the by and I went the last time I went ATVing was on a, a, a stag do, and it was so much fun. But my god, are those things loud? Um, and going over like boggy terrain, it was wet and it was raining and it was muddy. And there were so many like moments where oh, it was really difficult as well because there would be like a big like boggy dip, and then there'd be like the bit going up the hill there would have a tree root going over it. So you had to kind of like go. Oh, it was nuts. Loved it. Um, but yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. But I, it was loud. It was loud. Um, Isle of Wight concerts in the late sixties and early seventies were legendary. McMurphy, I think we actually went to a a, an, a a concert when we were there. But yeah, they they're, they have a big history for that kind of you know that kind of thing. Absolutely. Um, I'm scared to hope for a Python Patrol version of the ferret. Green, black, yellow would be so gnarly. Are you kidding me? Liquid Identity One Hundred One. I'm here for it all day long. Soapbox Derby. Oh, that's nuts, isn't it? That's just on a road, though. This was on a thing where if you put your arm left or right, there was like a there was like a lip of concrete that was going to rip some of the skin off your body. And I actually felt like I literally fell off. It was funny, and I wasn't hurt or anything badly, but I still had to have my arm bandaged up. Uh, but I found it really funny, and everyone was thought it fa- found it hilarious. Um, it wasn't like a, it didn't hurt. It was just like you know mental and i i realize now um i realize now that it's just it's never gonna you know like that could never happen nowadays you cannot do that stuff nowadays as a kid 
Uh, they have one in Tennessee. I want to go so badly. Wife isn't thrilled, says Blitz. <laughs> says Blitz. Amazing. Um, I thought this was a story about the big motorcycle race, but that's the Isle of Man steps toys. Uh, yeah, I, I um, yeah, there is a big one on Isle of Man, isn't there? There is. But no, that yeah, this Isle of Wight is different. Isle of Wight South, Isle of Man is like uh, close as is up near Scotland, isn't it? Pretty sure. Isle of Man, Isle of Sky, all that lot. I was glad it was 55 bucks, thought it might be more. Billy, mate, you and me both, and I was over the moon ecstatic that it was 54.99. Um, how do you keep the strippers on the ATV so confused? Uh, yeah, that pole, that, that, yeah, it's a little bit. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. I like that one, Step Stories. Uh, Scott Skeen, raining in England uh, all the time. Um, I went on an alpine slide somewhere in New Hampshire or Vermont. 80s Toy Boy. I'm not far from New Hampshire, so I'm going to I'm gonna find that alpine slide, and I'm going to try and recreate it, what I did last time. Uh, and this time, try and remove one of my limbs. Um, last time I was on an ATV, it broke down on me in the middle of the desert, and I had to be rescued. Wow. Fun times indeed, FC. But how terrified were you? Or was it like they knew where you were the whole time? It was not like you like we're going to die out there. Let us know. Or was it like were you kind of fearful? Was it a situation where you like did, did you have like a way of means of communicating? Did someone have to like leave you alone to get help? Like what was the situation? Because that would have sucked, wouldn't it? It's like just get on my bike and we'll get out of here and then tell them where that one is. Like that, <laughs> that would be really harsh if that's actually what happened to you. Um, let us know. Let us know. So now we have we know how Z Zaymot got his scar. Ferret missions on the Isle of Wight with Diagnostic eighty. Exactly, McMurphy. Uh, be cool if we get some scout accessories to add for long scout missions. Yeah, I, it would have been cool, Mark. Is that if that's what you're saying? Yeah, that they. What what does she actually come with? It's like, um, so it's yeah, it's just the knife, the two pistols, the helmet, and then the ferret, isn't it? So you're not getting like, you're not getting a ton of stuff um, with this one. And I think that's probably how they keep it to that. Now, someone mentioned it actually in the comments. So apologies for forgetting. Or missing that comment initially, but you can you can let me know again in the comments if it was just whoever it was. But someone mentioned that the the Tele Viper in the Python Patrol pack, in the Python not in the Python but in the regular and the Python Patrol set had all that gear and the, he the different heads and all that kind of stuff. So there was a lot more um, extra stuff for the figure. And in this one, you had that stripped down a bit, and that's probably why they can do the price point. Actually, I didn't I didn't really think about that until that comment popped up and then I forgot to really talk about it because I was in a probably talking about some other tangent that made no sense. Binoculars would have been cool. Yeah. Right. Um Isle of Man is kind of halfway between. Oh I didn't realise that. I'm an idiot. Mad Marauder colours would be cool. Cobra Crimson Commander. Oh yeah it would actually wouldn't it? Get on your bike Chris. I will. Uh got my first Techno Viper in today. Tremendous figure will take some beating for my number one slot this year says Steps Toys. I'm really excited to get that figure. Um, there is uh, every figure I get seems to just take the lead. Uh, I just, I just really, I'm one of those, you know, it's shiny, I, it's in your hand, I want it sort of people. But like, you know, I do genuinely get such a buzz off these figures whenever they come in. Um, e each and every one of them just, you know, makes me go all kind of funny in the trouser department. Um, what else are we saying? Uh, it took almost oh, FC Viper. It took almost four hours to get me, and yes, I was scared, and it and it was freaking hot, dude. What desert was it? This is crazy. I'm I'm glad you got out though. Holy crap! Did you have like uh, supplies and stuff and water? Did you have enough to kind of get by? Did you do that thing where you kind of like sit by the vehicle and create some sort of like little tent over you so that you've covered from the sun, like all of the. Uh, <laughs> all of the uh, survival TV shows I've ever watched have told you to do. Never leave the vehicle and so on and so forth. Um, I used to love Ray Mears. Oh, my God. Ray Mears and Bear Grylls. I used to go nuts watching those shows. But Ray Mears, I, I preferred, oddly enough. Bear Grylls was like the kind of all-action, crazy, do-stupid-things kind of guy. And then Ray Mears was like the, I, I can live off a forest and be quite happy about it. Do you know what I mean? Like he was just like walking around, showing you how to like do this and do that. 
um and and all that kind of stuff but talking about survival stories in the show that show was my i loved it it was so good if you haven't seen the ray mears survival episodes tv show check it out ray mears m-e-a-r-s so good and obviously you probably heard of bear grills um but anyway let me know in the comments if you're also a ray mears fan like i was i even remember going to a um a convention in Birmingham where they do like the outdoor conventions, a big trade shows for, you know, like, you know, just outdoor stuff like backpacks and scouts and, <laughs> and, and things like that. Um, and it was, it was phenomenal. And Ray Mears was there, but I didn't get to meet him. I was gutted, but it was really cool. And I bought, when we were at that show, I bought um, a, a backpack, like a, like a big, like, travel backpack kind of job you know one of those big old hosses uh with like a you know you the, you the top came like a a coverall thing that was connected to it which you could cover the whole thing and zip up it was great so good compartments like top compartment major me, me, section in the middle and then a the bottom compartment loads of side pocket it was amazing proper hardcore outdoor one i have still got that and i still use it to this day that was 20 years ago probably more than that who has had a thing for that long and it still works and is still in use um i would like to know in the comments and i will not take a pair of underpants as the answer because i can't i can't keep a pair of underpants for a year before they turn to absolute shriveled dust um oh scott you've given me the information i like it you're giving me the info for the scout. Is it for the ferret or for the ferret scout? It's probably for the ferret scout, right? Um, so driver one, which is ridiculously poor, isn't it? Light weapons one, infiltration one, recon two. I would be like, let's do driver two and recon three, minimum. Because come on, how can you not be a decent driver on an ATV? Okay, I, I just told you I had two stories of me being on an ATV and I'm a terrible driver. Okay, fair enough. It's driver one. Um, Ray Mears would be a great custom. Accessory nettles. Oh, mate, are you kidding me? Uh, since I missed the one um, Once Man CC live stream, I thought that they were going to be going to IGs between the trooper on the bat, heavy in the next phase, but it seems like they're doing Cobra La. Steps toys, they can do both and they are probably going to do both. Uh, we've got IGs and the IG bat. I imagine there's going to be more, trust me. Um, and Cobra La, we've only got, you know, the same kind of thing. We only have two names so far. We only have Nemesis Immortal and Cobra Commander. And th with IGs, we have Metalhead, Bat, Iron Grenadier. Um, who else? Is that it so far? Probably. I don't want to... Do, I don't want to do another slip up and say something I don't, I'm going to regret. But no, I think, yeah, I, I, they, they're going to do both. Do not worry. Do not worry. Um, who has had a thing for so long and it still works? Checks to make sure wife is not in the room, says so Steps Toys. <laughs> uh, I was in Mexico near and Oh, FC Vibe is continuing the story. This is enthralling, honestly. I was in Mexico near Ensenada only had a little bit of water and I sat behind the ATV trying to hide from the sun. This is a crazy, I love this story though. Like I know that sucks, but how cool a story is that to have? Was the ATV blue? Did it have a red cannon on it? Is my next question. Were you doing like full on cosplay? How much were you wearing as well? Cause obviously you can't, when you're doing something where you're going to be on like an open vehicle and it's hotter than the sun, you're not necessarily going to wear in loads of gear, are you? But were you? Because that would have been even worse, wouldn't it? Or would it would it have been good to be able to use the clothing you had to kind of cover you from the sun? It's hard to say, isn't it? Anyway, I'm sorry, FC Viper. Sorry to kind of get so excited about something that was obviously a very difficult time for you. But my goodness um that's crazy pants and i like the uh, it's cool that we have a story in the comments while we're talking about this because it's not like i have any stories about the isle of white or anything like that um 788 ig and crimson but some cobra blue repaints on them more out there vipers would be fun for my ocd 
Um, if only the winch worked. Yeah, indeed. Um, operate <laughs> Steps Toys says Operation Make Chris Spill Another IG Name Has Failed. Um, oh, that's a good shout, Viper Scout. Nullifier is both IG and Cobra La. For those that aren't aware, yeah, he's, there's, there's definitely a, um, there's definitely something to that from Viper Scout. The Nullifier um, was originally designed, wasn't he, for um, Cobra La, as was the uh, the kind of like bike that he was going to be um, driving, that kind of like Cobra La bike thing. Um, and yeah, and they ended up going a different way with it, didn't they? Um, using it as a Iron Grenadier um, figure, uh, you know, character and uh, a different vehicle. I am not Ray. I swear I'm not rooting for the desert in this in this story. Um, but yeah, that's that's cool. Anyway, great shots. Uh, I, I did. I, I still had these in from the last episode, but um, yeah, just to clarify, that cheeky figure was obviously the Ferret Scout. Um, there you go. Complete. I love the fact that that render has no bearing on what the final figure vehicle looked like. It's so funny. And I love the fact that the deco is reversed. In And it is seems to be reversed on everything, like the white and the black on the helmet. Um, like there's a bit of white it looks like on... Well, actually, that's not white, is it? It's probably just all black, that helmet. Um, but the little kind of front visor with the fangs doesn't have, um, doesn't have, uh, isn't white basically, or white. Um, and yeah, the the figure's main body base body is blue, which I think is really interesting and fun on that. Um, maybe a, a future repaint in the uh, in the on the cards. Uh, but yeah, I love the fact that, that it is so an old school render of the original ferret to a degree. With it's like it. Actually, I joked, and I think I said it's like if if you asked someone to draw a ferret from memory, <laughs> it does feel a little bit like that. Um, yes, yeah, Sundo animation definitely kind of maybe that was the reference for it. But anyway, amazing! I love what it turned out to be. Anyway, and there's the helmet, the grey model helmet as well they used for the uh, for another one of the shots, which I don't still don't understand the what was the narrative there. I'm have to ask Matt. I'm going to have to ask Shooting the Galaxy when we interview him. Um, oh, FC Viper. That's what I wanted to hear, though. Um, okay, lol. The ATV has dark colours, but not dark blue, I wish. I only had a T-shirt and shorts, so I got sunburnt. I was lucky another rider saw me by luck, as the ATV rental company could not locate me. Dude, that was a crazy lucky... That was crazy lucky, man. Oh my goodness. I can laugh about it now, but yeah, not a fun time. I'm happy that you can laugh about it now, FC Viper. Holy crap. Great round of applause for FC Viper for one hell of a friggin' story in the comments today. Thank you for that, dude. That was crazy. Um, and we, we're, glad you, we're glad you made it, put it that way. Um, yeah, so anyway, there's your helmet. Sweet. Um, listings. We're, da we're down to this bit now. Um, we don't really have to sit on this. We'll just quick recap and then we'll call it a day. But yes, there you go. There's everything we know so far. Ferret Scout is done. In fact, I can move the Ferret Scout over, can't I? Yes, I can. Uh, so what I'll have to do is probably... I'll probably redo this completely, actually. I'll probably have a a different graphic for 2024 next time you see it because there's not much point having everything on the left hand side you know there's not much point having everything in the green over the left hand side anymore we might as well get rid of that because we know it's done it's done and dusted we can move that on and then we can start kind of like we can just put what we need to know on here um but obviously 2025 I don't have to rush yet. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's ev that's everything we know so far. Obviously, Ferret Scout can go over to the green side. It's over there on the right at the moment, but we know that's all correct, uh, which means that it's very likely that everything else that we've got on there is correct too. Not that it wouldn't be. I mean, yeah, they, they, don't, they don't change. They don't usually change that aspect of things. Um, so Alpine, Iron Grenadier Bat, Iron Grenadiers, and other will be coming for the next four-figure wave. We'll see that before the end of the year. Probably, Well, of course, we'll see it in, in 
what, June, I'd imagine. Yojo Jiwen. Where the ferret? Ferret's over to the right-hand side because I haven't updated the graphics yet, Cobra Crimson Rook Commander. It is Scooby VEH um, on the right-hand side of the screen. But it's, it will be. It, I'll move it. Don't worry. It'll get green again. Um, yeah. Anything else to say? Nemesis Immortal. We know that's a deluxe. End of story. Sorted. Road Pig. We know he comes with a pet. We can't tell you what it is yet, but it's cool. And um, I think that'll be one that'll either be leaked before or we'll see it, you know, like the leak, either the promo image leak beforehand the day before, or we'll see that, you know, you might you might get some factory image or something. But either way, um, we can't say anything until that happens. And when, when it does happen, we'll just be able to go, there you go, sorted. Now, TNS Buttercup, we know is Marauder Sarge. Um, we are thinking that possibly MM Scrappy could be the uh, Low Light Spirit 2-pack. Um, we don't know. We just feel that's pretty strong. Uh, Raptor SDCC, we know. Stardust is the PulseCon exclusive this year. We know that. Um, Ferret Scat's done. That's over on the left-hand side in green. Just, just ignore it that it's there. Uh, <laughs> I can't say hi, it's me. Stop trying to make, make me say it. Any inklings of Blossom VEH? <sighs> All we know about Blossom VEH is that it's Amazon or Famazon, right? The other thing is we don't know, but there's a good there's a good possibility based on all of the information at hand that it could be something like a Vamp Repaint, aka a uh, Stinger, Vamp Repaint Retool or whatever. So it could be a Stinger as a vehicle, um, but we don't know is the answer to that. So we know it's Amazon or Famazon. We don't know that, though. Um, there's someone asking about numbers. What is 120? Yeah, we don't know, do we? Because, um, well, we don't know when the, the official release of the Mad Marauders, Low Light Spirit and Sarge are, but I would assume it's going to be Yojo June around that time, at least reveal and and kind of stuff like that. Uh, pre-orders and what have you. Um, Blossom V8. No, yeah, sorry, we've gone past that. 120, we don't know. But we do know that 119 is the ferret now, don't we? So that fills one gap. Maybe it's a stinger. Could be. I don't know. But again, like we're operating on just pure guesswork, I would say, on Blossom VEH. Fred Deluxe, we don't know at all. Not even a, an inkling. Um, Whip Snakes two pack. We have. I have a sp speculative thought now that with Once a Man Cobra Commander and Nemesis Mortal on the cards, that that could very well be a two pack of Royal Guards because we knew we we knew we do know that the Whip Snakes two pack is a troop builder two pack, and the fact that Whip Snakes and Atlas share a thematic connection in that they are both professional lacrosse team names, ergo, uh, we could be looking at a two-pack of Royal Guards. Just saying. Just saying. I don't. We don't know. That's just a massive, gross guess. Uh, and I hope it's true. Um, Yogi, we can't say, but we know it's Target. Zorak, we can't say, but we know it's Walmart. And that's all I can say. In fact, I will go a little bit further, actually. No, I'll I'll give you another little hint. Both of them are different, but both of them are more than one. God, this is gross, isn't it? With these like, what do you call it? Like um, riddles. Both of them. <laughs> what did I say? Both of them are yeah. Like both of the both are different, but both are more than one. <laughs> so I don't. I'm not going to go into what I mean by that. You can speculate as much as you like. Yojo June is going to be big this year. Yes, it is. Um, will Retro Cobra Commander be announced at Yojo June or after summer? I don't know, actually. I, I assume it's going to be your four-figure wave, the next three retro, and then a bunch of other exclusives and other things. So, yeah, I'd imagine that the retro could probably be in there too. Those four, Sarge, the two-pack, three figures. That makes sense, doesn't it? Sarge two pack, three retro figures, four them, and then what like a figure pet, and then maybe a deluxe. You're looking at 10 
Yojo June. Oh, but then again, Yojo June, like June is redonkulous, isn't it? And it also, they, they've done more than 10 before. And, oh, thank you very much, McMurphy. Thank you for the super chat. Very much appreciate it. Uh, thanks for the fun live stream, as always. If Road Pig's pet isn't a skunk, I'm going to put up a stink. Hilarious on like so many levels on that pun. I love it. Uh, but thank you so much for the super chat, mate. We really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, yeah, keeping the lights on. <laughs> One of these episodes is going to be like this. Yeah, so we didn't get any super chats. <laughs> so I had to, we, we got our electricity cut. Um, I'm just kidding, but the light's right there. And now I've probably put it too bright and now I can't see anything. Um, if Blossom is a vamp repaint retool, my, well, we don't know if it's a, a re... My um, guess on that one is that it, it's probably going to be a vehicle that can be repainted. I don't know if it's going to be something brand new is what I'm getting at, Scott. I didn't. I don't know if it's going to be a vamp um, thing, but I don't know if it's... You know what I mean? Like I, I, It's really, honestly, blind guesswork on Blossom VEH. It, it, the only difference being that Fred Deluxe, I don't have an idea because it could be anything. Blossom VH is the same, but because it's a vehicle and it's very clearly a vehicle, it kind of narrows the it narrows the the uh, options down a bit, if you get what I'm saying. If Blossom is a vamp repaint retool, my money is on vamp mark two, quick repaint of clutch, new weapon attachment, Robert is Aunt Fanny's husband. I like it. Um, Scott, no, it, it's good point, and it could very well be. You, you're totally right there. There's absolutely a possibility it could be. Python Patrol Croc says Ed. Oh yes, please. Given the once a man CC whip snakes has to be royal guards. I, Chris, I want that to be so true. You have no idea. Uh, master figure and pet. Master. What? Chris is going to take your babies with these riddles. I am, aren't I? Uh, Yojo June, only two months away. Oh my God, is it? We're in April already, aren't we? That's not, that blows my mind. That blows my absolute brains out, honestly. How are we in April already? It was like January yesterday. It was January 1983 yesterday, wasn't it? What happened? Where's the time gone? Um, I got in with Ram, but it'd be neat to have a Sunbow Breaker as a retro figure. That, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah, Steps Toys. I could see them doing Breaker as a retro figure with the bubble gum. Yes, exactly. Oh, oh, the bubble gum. Um, assembly required, Brian Sauer and all those um, awesome peeps. I think it was for Armour, actually. It was one of the gear kits came with, a, or maybe it was at AR. I can't remember which one, but the one of the kits came with a little, um, two little bits of a blown up bubble, one that's popping and one that was like a, just a, a ball, and they attach to Breaker's um, mic piece on his uh, on the classified figure. It's well good. Um, I think mine has got his. I think he's got the chewing gum on him. I might have taken it off. May have been removed. I don't know where that chewing gum is, but it is in a little box. They put he, uh, Brian made a little box for it, like a little Bazooka Joe sort of thing. It was amazing. Um, it was so good. Chris channeling cartoon dungeon master. I was, wasn't I, them, James? Big time. Oh. <laughs> Barbarian, thief, and acrobat. If both are different, but both are more than one, can shockwaves swat on the beach? <laughs> I love it. I love it when you reference old episodes that most people have forgotten. Hi, it's me. I say, oh, it's, like, it's only like a month ago I said that. Well, Ed said that. If what is just genius, I love it. The stinger is going to sell fast. I agree if they do one, but yeah, I agree. Ed, I doubt anyone's eager for another croc master since he's still warming shells everywhere. Ah, oh, you say that, but I would love a, a Python Patrol croc master. I love this croc master, it's a phenomenal figure. Phenomenal. Um, Fred Deluxe equals Fred Seven just to throw us off. Oh, yeah, just to be right on the nose for a change. Um, time flies, my dude, it does, doesn't it? I want the red crocodile. So do I, Cobra Crimson Command. So do I. Anyway, right. 2024, we know that now. Boom. Talked about it, I think, for most for the most part. We don't know who Oki and Azrael are. We don't at all. So there you go. Um, and Rough and Ready are Action Marine and Action Pilot. Brilliant. More 60th or Legacy, as it'll be called next year. Uh, but they'll still be called 60th this year. I think next year, though, it will be called Legacy, I believe. 
Or it might not be called legacy, and they might just not have anything on it at all, but it's just the le- the line and the code words will have it. Le- Who knows? Anyway, standard retail waves of four we know are Sandar, Saw Viper, Leatherneck, and Dial Tone for the first batch, and then Frag Viper, Blowtorch, someone else, and someone else for the next batch. Um, and we don't know the rest of the of those figures just yet. We don't at all. Um, so just those six are the ones that we're aware of from the retail waves. We do have more information about some of the exclusives and some of the retro classified, but we can't say. Um, I'm hoping to be able to unlock some of these with name only reveals and what have you in the future. We'll see how that goes. Um, Daria Deluxe. Um, again, it's one of those things where it just could be anything. The BB designation, I think, just means sort of like standard, maybe? Because like the deluxe and the pet figures usually are, you know, like uh, like Norgahide comes in, the, effectively is one of the wave figures, isn't it? You know what I mean? Like you can get them anywhere and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I imagine that the BB designation is effectively just kind of linking it to available anywhere. Um, SP Philip, GG Hudson, do scream a little bit Target and Walmart, possibly, but we don't know. We don't have the answer to that. What we do know, though, um, is TT is Pulse or PulseCon exclusive. So one of those TTs, and we are ex- assuming it's Arthur Deluxe, based on the fact that that was the same thing last year, is going to be the PulseCon exclusive. Um, so Sewer Urchin, Terra, American Made, Man Cow, Red Scare, they're going to be your Pulse exclusives. And Arthur Deluxe is probably going to be a PulseCon exclusive. Now, that says to me that we're probably going to get things like, not like, yeah, like I suppose sort of like, what did we get last year for Delu- for PulseCon? Let's have a look. So Pulse exclusives, HMS and the Techno Viper, the Ferret and Scout, uh, PulseCon is Starduster, um, MM Scrappy is also Pulse, could be a two pack of figures with low light and spirit. Could be, but we don't know um, for sure. So that is telling me that the M, that the PulseCon designation means something a lot more significant most of the time, doesn't it? So either a two pack or a um, figure vehicle or a figure towable or a, you know, that kind of thing. So could we be looking at one, two, three, four, five more vehicles, towables, two packs? Possibly, which is bonkers, isn't it? Um, but again, we'll have more information as the year progresses. Um, and then, of course, we have Legacy RR Tommy, which we know now is a 60th or whatever you call the 60th next year, which is probably going to be Legacy. We know it's that that subline of figures, basically. Um, yeah. And then of course we've got the retro classified. We know the first three, we don't know the rest. Um, but again, we can't say until there's some sort of like name drop or something. And like we, I, I'll, as soon as anything like that happens, I'll literally be like, guys, here you go. Um, because at that point no one cares, but at least we unlock these things. Um, right then that's pretty much it for 2025. I think. This I, is still floating around, but I'm still I still think planning can. I don't think it's going to go forward. It could do though. I will. I'm going to pose that question, and then you're like, we can't talk about it. And I'll be like, tell me about it, or I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut the feed. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we don't know. And also, I don't know if it's the 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 male Cobra officer and Storm Shadow. Uh, it could be like a Valkyrie and Storm Shadow. Who knows? Selfie series is probably not going to happen. So let's just let's just move on, right? Yeah, okay. It's getting late now as well. I just realized what the time was. What's going on? Uh, anyway, these are the name-only reveals we are, are officially aware of at the moment. As you can see, once a man, Cobra Commander has been added to that. Um, and these are your remaining digital renders. I am so excited to see these figures. I can't tell you. How long has it been? Like, I really want to see... I really want to see those fingers. I really want to see these renders. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, not these renders. I want to see them in real life. I want to see the figures. So um, I really want to see them figures. That works. Uh, yeah, I think these are going to be really cool. And I imagine we'll get something soon in terms of an update for the Dragonfly. 
Um, and then unofficial leaks, we're back here again. I've already kind of gone over these quite a lot with you guys. Snowcat and Thunder Machine, we have had an, another source say that these might be turned, that these are coming. So uh, two sources. Uh, it sounds like it's a possibility to me. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say we're almost there on those. IG Bat, my bad. That's We know that's coming. Marauders 2-pack, Sarge, we've seen the leaks. They're obviously alive. They're coming. Uh, Retro CC, we've known for a long time. And Heart Wrencher is part of that group that have already been name-only revealed, aka Nemesis Mortal, Starduster, and Road Pig. So Heart Wrencher will definitely be joining that group. I Just trust me, all right? Heart Wrencher will definitely be joining that group at some point. And that, I believe, is that. Right, let's bring this to a close. Um, we'll do like a little wrap up and uh, I'll just transition into this. Right then, thank you very much for joining me tonight, guys. It's been a pleasure chatting with you and having fun and all that good stuff, as it always is. Chris, blink two times if we're getting Retro Major Blood, Mindbender and or Serpentor this year. <sighs> I can't. I'm trying to this year. No, <laughs> I can't. I can't do it because we're not. Um, Cold Slither would be a good con exclusive. Yeah, yeah, it would. I think that would be really cool. Actually, could you imagine like classified level, you know, like guitars and drum sets and all that kind of stuff? Um, FC Viper. I'll give you. I'll give you something here. Right. One of those you might get. You might get one of those next year. All right. That's all I'm saying. And I'm not can't say which one it is. You're gonna have to work it out yourself. Um it's been nine months, three weeks, and 16 days, has it? Hey, would they ever put international release decos on the retro card line? Oh, I'd love that. Absolutely love that. I don't, I don't know though. I don't know where they fit. Like Outback came in the in like the Tiger Force kind of thing so that was kind of like how he was able to be wedged in glenda's in a has lab um that's pretty much it in it uh big ben wasn't a british release he's just a british character anyway by the by um who is my current favorite oh hang on let sorry there's there's lots of questions i'll try and get through everything before i go could Salvador Pet be Once a Man CC, Mutated CC, and Big Golden Snake? I can tell you, Kenny, we know who Salvador Pet is, and it is not Cobra Commander Mutated, but that is a fun thing to think about. Um, well, I, actually, we don't know who Mutated CC is on that list, if he is on that list. So uh, otherwise, I would have unlocked it because it's name only revealed sort of thing, if you know what I'm saying. But as, as it is, we haven't had. Um, the Salvador Pet one named yet. And as soon as we do, that episode will be going immediately live. Um, I love how other people in the comments always do kind of my job for me. I appreciate it. Uh, saying like, like McMurphy saying, 117 watching, 67 likes. Come on, people, like and subscribe. Um, I do appreciate it. And I do want more subscription uh, subs on the YouTube channel. So yeah, get involved. Get involved, yo. Um, Gridiron Studios has guitars and other stuff. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Get Gridiron do some amazing things. What day is my interview? It's Monday, Stanley. So I'll be, I, I was hoping to get it done this week, but it didn't pan out. So we have planned, um, kind of been back and forth with Emily today. And Monday is going to be the interview. Uh, I'll try and get it done as soon as possible. And then I have to, I, I don't know in terms of like approvals because Emily's involved. Usually she'll be able to say yay or nay or like just can you remove this or but she very rarely does. They'll they might say during the interview and then I know to cut it if you know what I mean. So like uh, and we haven't really had a lot of that genuinely. A lot of the 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 interviews we have had I only cut out like I'm a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to edited interviews. I don't like having like long periods of of space like gaps. And I don't like having, you know, if there's a, an audio issue or if there's a problem or something like that, I like to try and fix it or cut it out or that kind of stuff. I don't cut out stuff like to the point where it's like, you know, I go for approvals and they're like, oh, we don't like what we said here. Let's cut that out. That very rarely happens, if if at all, with Hasbro. Like I said, they usually have someone on the line 
like someone in marketing. And Emily is like, she's like blooming Hasbro marketing prime. So it's, um, yeah, she, she usually sorts that out. So I should be able to get it out pretty much as soon as I finish the edit, uh, which could take ages, but you know what I'm saying? What is my current favorite figure? That is a good question, Cobra Crimson Commander. And it probably has to be, um, that is a good question. I think Ripper is up there, but also I have to probably give it to the Steel Core now because obviously I got them very recently. And I think the Steel Core, both of those figures, in fact, like the female Steel Core was a real uh, surprise banger for me. Um, really like how she turned out. And yeah, I just, I love the Steel Core figures. They're, they're amazing. They're probably my favorite at the moment. Um, if they're doing once a man CC, then Sunbow specific stuff is on the table. So fingers crossed for Cold Slither. Yeah, absolutely, Paul. OMG, I'm so excited. Thanks, Chris. Well, you know, just letting you know, one of them is correct on that thing you said. Can we get Dollar General basic assortment classified figures? Actually, that's not a bad shout, Rachel. I kind of felt like the, the, the retro line was sort of doing that, but then the price kind of basically found its way up to the same as classified uh, standard retail. So yeah, I I think that's a good idea though, actually. Like less equip. It's hard to say in it, but I actually think I actually think they probably could do that. Yeah, they could do. I am almost at five k, Scott. We but we're so like we've been stuck on four nine something for ages. I'm so stoked I got my retro beachhead and ferret. Thank you. well done, Justin and Anderson. I'm very happy for you. Uh, I just started my channel today, Cobra Crimson Commander. Good luck with that. That's fun. that's awesome. Um, yeah, wish you all the luck with that. Um, ask Emily about the horror of SDCC Mindbender. Will 2024 SDCC be any easier to get? Uh, we've had one since Mindbender, haven't we? Yeah, Chuckles. So we have had a slightly easier and better go of it. So I'd imagine, Ben, that um, I imagine that this year will be much easier, or at least, you know, not as painful. Please ask her about O Ring and other franchises. Okay, Pedro, that's. I'm sure that's something that, yeah, that, I'm sure that's something that they can maybe discuss, possibly. Chuckles was super easy to get, and he was SDCC. Yeah, sorry, I was just saying that, Paul, yeah. Um, it's weird how tight-wrapped name reveals are with G.I. Joe compared to Transformers. We know almost all mainline figures are Transformers in 2025. Yeah, but only because of massive leaks. And I think there's more... It's It's funny, isn't it? I think we've definitely seen... What we saw early on was a lot of information got out early like a lot of information, like not that everyone knew of, because not everyone was sharing it or, you know, all that kind of stuff at that point, but, uh, or leaking it. But like, we would get information of whole line plans, like for the whole year. And yeah, some of it was coded, but then some of it was like, we managed to unlock based on other information we got and what have you. So we, we for a while early on, there was like, it, it, you could get every bit of information. As the line got more and more successful though, and it got to the point where it is like really, really doing well, and the brand's really, you know, um, in a good place and all that kind of stuff. Um, they started to really like the, it starts. It's, it just started to get harder and harder to find out that information, and and then oddly enough, like Transformers, um, they just. I mean, the whole line plan got got leaked. It was nuts for twenty twenty five. Like, and again, we had that information, and we're just like. That's cool. Ain't touching that with a 20 foot barge pole. And then, like, what, a few months or a month later, it was blooming everywhere. Crazy pants. So, yeah, um, I think it's definitely got, it's gotten harder as the line has gotten more successful. And it'll probably go round in certain, like, it'll, there'll be like a, a thing where at some point it'll get like loose again and you'll probably get all that information in the same way that you get Transformers. Plus, there are probably a lot more people invested in Transformers as well uh, as a fandom that like you know makes that information a lot more valuable than say the classified series, for example. Um, but I think that you know that will probably change at some point, and all that information will start leaking out again. I, I would imagine. Um, I'm loving the recon divers at the mo. Yeah, they're pretty wicked. I haven't got them yet though. I'd, I can't wait to get those um, 60th figures. Yeah, they look great. Ripper 10 out of 10, so good. Um, yeah. McLeod is the favorite figure, duh. Sorry, Mike. Yeah, Tripwire's stuck there, definitely. Um, 
I like the guessing game. It's fun to slowly find out who these are. I kind of do like that as well, Paul. I do. Uh, I, I like, I personally, from my personal point of view, I love the detective work kind of aspect of it and the kind of like digging into like what this could be and cross-referencing numbers and all this kind of stuff, getting like source information from different places and just kind of like just trying to work it out. I find that so fun. Um, please ask her about Pythona and the Royal Guards. We need them. I'll definitely be dropping hints. I'll be dropping hints, trust me. Um, what's the next official classified reveal event announcement? Probably Jojo June, but I imagine there'll be a Dragonfly update. I don't know if they'll be revealing anything though. Uh, as in, I don't think they'll be doing a pre-order thing until Yojo June. I don't pay attention to Transformers. Any leaks on a top spin or twin twist? Only ones I had as a kid. Past the priority, we've the first of all, there have been a number of top spin and twin twist uh releases over the years. Um, it took a while for them to get involved. There was third party before that. And then we finally got them in like, was it Combiner Wars? It was one of those like lines. And I think I think that they've been doing, I think they might have had some recently as well in like the recent listings. I'll have to look through them again. But um go and check out TFW. TFW on uh they're they're like a the Transformers forum, basically. Is it TFW 2005? TFW 2005, 2005. Go check out their page. It's like his tank for Transformers, basically. And you'll be able to find that post, I imagine, with all of the leak listings. And um, it'll tell you there if there's a twin twist or a top spin. I loved those, by the way, as, as a kid. I had twin twist, the one with the the drill bits, um, as opposed to top spin, who I think had like kind of like more jutting sort of like pile drivers almost, or like kind of like sharp fork, basically. And tops, yeah, top spin and a twin twist was one I had, and I really enjoyed that, that figure. It was so much fun just watching it go fling and then flipping up and standing up. It was amazing. Uh, still had that figure actually. Um, yeah, okay, right. I'm I'm bringing it to a close because this has gone on way too long. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. I will see you guys probably on Saturday um, for the weekly. And what else was I going to say? Tomorrow, depending on if there's any news or anything, we'll see how it goes. I'm currently working on Let's Talk Classified Frag Viper. So we, I, I'll probably be next week, though, in all, in real, realistically. Um, I might be able to get one. I might be able to squeeze it out over the weekend, maybe a Sunday. Do it a Sunday. See what, see what Sunday does for us. But, yes, we'll have, you know, loads more videos coming, hopefully. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Now, stay fresh, cheese bags. And as always, after three, you know what to do. I sorry, I, I'm not gonna do that again. I did it, I did that last time for the weekly and then accidentally played the, the final video. And it was like, where did you go? So after three, <laughs> let's do this properly. <laughs> oh, how do I do that? Um, just to ask to answer Paul's question quickly, shooting the galaxy interview. It's in the approvals process as we speak, but we don't have a date for it yet. Um, right then, I did. I blew my load early. After three, you know what to do. One, two, three. Full force. Okay, now I can press the button. That's it for this installment of the Full Force News Burst. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time, and as always, full force. Make sure you get involved with the discussion by liking, sharing and commenting on these videos and as always you can keep up with the show after listening by following on X, formerly Twitter, at The Full Force, liking the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash The Full Force. We've also added a brand new Instagram so check us out there as well at The Full Force Podcast and if you would like to contact the show you can message us on any of those platforms with feedback and questions. We also have a Patreon page so if you want to show your support for the show, see your name up in lights on these videos or or enjoy exclusive bonus content then check out patreon.com forward slash the full force podcast or click on the link on any of the posts this podcast appears in full force